This looks messed up, dude. Nine-year-old uses true crime skills from favorite TV show to manipulate captor. The Jeanette Tamayo case. Uh, this is a true story that happened in 2003 about a nine-year-old girl who got kidnapped. And uh, this is true crime. They were doing true crime. Got kidnapped and uh, attempted. They, they... <sighs> but this is an actual nightmare. Apparently, this nine-year-old outsmarts her kidnapper through the TV shows that she watched. Like... That is a fucking crazy ride. I haven't watched this one yet, but I was uh, recommended by some people in my comments of my last true crime video. So let me know future true crime shit that you want me to look into. I have very little experience in this world, but I'm very excited to learn more. So let's go. Lord Nuxalore, except this time it's real life lore. It's not actually, you know, video game lore. And real life lore somehow is even more fucked up. Uh, and I just went through the fallout vaults. So this is crazy. All right, let's see what we got. This is Little Caesars Pizza. How can I help you? On July 8th, 2003, a Little Caesars cashier in San Jose, California received the most unusual call. Oh, a God. little girl with a whimpering voice holding back her tears as she spelled every letter of her address. Holy shit, bro. Can you imagine working at Little Caesars Pizza and you get that call? It's crazy that this is real life shit. Are you smarter than a fifth grader? Kidnap edition. One by one. I'm sorry? Who is this? Little did they know, she had been kidnapped and her abductor was forcing her to call them. After multiple days of captivity, this had been her only contact with the outside world. He went downstairs, came back upstairs with the pizza and was standing with the pizza box and was staring at me. And he handed me a flyer. God damn, holy shit. And on the flyer was a picture of me and it said missing. God damn! turned to me he was like i have to get rid of you tonight oh my god dude Fuck. kidnapped assaulted and held in bounds nine-year-old Jeanette tamayo was long gone when the police finally arrived at the actual nightmare literal actual nightmare the scene a young girl was abducted from her home after school the police later got their hands on some footage from a nearby security camera, but it was quickly deemed useless due to the low quality of the recording. Bro, what is even the point of video cameras at that point? Oh my god, dude. Police have no leads in the disappearance of nine-year-old Jeanette Tenmayo. So After sad. days without any development in her case, How are people this cruel? and no statewide Amber Alert issued, Jeanette knew she had to take matters into her own hands. This is a nine-year-old kid, by the way, that got kidnapped and assaulted. My fear turned into courage, and I told myself, I'm a fighter. I feel like these, uh, these recordings are reenactments and not the, obviously, the actual girl, but yeah. I'm gonna make it. In the thriving city of San Jose, California, in the heart of Silicon Valley, nine-year-old- Ah, oh, it's always California, God damn it! Jeanette Tamayo just got off her school bus and was heading home. Once there, she noticed that the screen door was slightly ajar. Oh, she thought that maybe her mother came back from work early and didn't think much of it. Once inside, she went to her room and realized that something was wrong. Oh, her God. bedroom window had been smashed- Oh God, get out of there, kid! Oh no! Broken glass everywhere. She immediately took a step back and ran toward the phone to call her mom, but to her dismay, the cable had been cut off. Before she had time to understand what was happening, she heard someone knocking at the door. Jeanette turned around and saw a stranger behind the screen. Scared and confused, she reluctantly opened it. No! I feel like this is just such a harrowing lesson. It's like, I mean, I don't blame the kid. The kid's obviously freaked out of their mind. And then when he was asking me questions, he was oh my God, this is an actual recording. kind of peeking inside, trying to see who was in there. And that started making me feel really uncomfortable. And I started slowly closing the sliding door. I got scared because I, I felt a really bad vibe from him. And he put his hand in the way, he slid it open. She, she opened the door for him. It's like she was a kid. She was a nine-year-old kid. She was a nine-year-old kid. What does she know? Fuck, dude. This is why you don't trust anybody, goddammit. I mean took me to my brother's room. He threw me on the bed and took oh off god. my pants. Oh my god, this is a nine-year-old kid. Oh my fucking god. H how are people this fucking unhinged? Please tell me this, this motherfucker got the chair. Out of respect for Jeanette, we won't cover the assault as it is extremely graphic. After he was done, her attacker handcuffed her and tied her legs together. He then carried her to his car parked in the garage. There, the man tried- In the garage? How is this guy parked in the garage? 
to open the door, but couldn't lift it more than a few inches before he saw another vehicle stopping right in front of the garage. Oh. From the back seat, Jeanette recognized her mother's car. Oh. My brother crawled under the garage when it opened a few inches, and the first thing I told him was to run. But her attacker was already at it. He got got out of the car and started walking toward him. At only 15, Paul knew he wouldn't stand a chance, but he chose to fight him anyway. He grabbed a screwdriver from the counter and ran at him. The man then immediately disarmed him and started punching him in the face, over and over. Restrained by the handcuffs and the rope around her leg, Jeanette couldn't do anything except watch in horror as the man dragged her brother inside the house. This is the, this is the worst shit in the world. How could someone be this cruel? And that brother just obviously wanted to help. God damn it. As soon as they entered, they came face to face with Roselia, Jeanette's mother. She attempted to fight the man and successfully separated him from her son. Then, Paul rushed toward the kitchen cabinet and pulled out a frying pan from it. He tried to help his mom, but once again, the man disarmed him before he could do anything and turned the improvised weapon against Roselia, striking her repeatedly until she fell to the ground. I remember hearing my mom screaming. So this poor girl, her whole family ended up getting killed by this, this guy. And it went quiet. I couldn't hear much after that. And I see the man rush back into the garage and into the car. And when I seen blood on his face, I was like, did you kill them? And he just started laughing and I just started to cry. I was like, fuck. How could you be this cruel? How could anyone be this cruel? How, how could any human being really be this fucking insane? I, I'm just, it's maddening. Shit, dude. I didn't know if he like, had... Think about it. What, what did he think would happen to him? Like, let, let's say let's say he actually goes through with this. He kills this, these two people in the house and kidnaps his girl. What does he think is going to happen to him? Does he think he's going to have a happy ending? Like, what goes through the mind of these fuckers? Killed them. I didn't know, like, if they were there anymore, if he had killed them. And I was just thinking with the blood on his face that they were gone. My family was gone. Driving like a madman, Jeanette's kidnapper cut through some of her neighbor's bushes. Fighting through her restraints, she managed to turn around and take one last look at her house before they turned the corner. She felt an overwhelming feeling of relief when she made eye contact with Rosalia, running amok behind the car. So she survived. Whew. So her mom survived. Uh, that insanity. Her face was heavily wounded and covered in blood, but at least she was alive. Not far behind, her brother Paul was painfully limping towards some bystanders, waving his arm in the air and screaming for help. As soon as the car passed the corner... Brother. Brother. So the family did survive in the end. He beat them up and, and managed to escape. But, fuck, dude. This, this is awful. This is awful. Jeanette started to scream at the other drivers passing by, slamming her shoulder against the window in an attempt to catch their attention, but her undertaking didn't go unnoticed, as her attacker immediately grabbed the screwdriver from earlier and violently attacked her. After what the fuck? being hit twice, she moved out of his reach. I just remember sliding down and laying there and looking up at the ceiling of the car and just thinking to myself, I'm not going to make it. You, these thoughts going through like a nine-year-old's head after going through that, like, like I can't even imagine, like the the trauma that that leaves forever is, like, absolutely insane, right? Dude, I'm gonna die. Back at the house, after the police arrived, Roselia was refusing to get into the ambulance. She was trying to explain everything that happened to the detective. Obviously, the mom wants to save her daughter. She doesn't care about the wounds that happened to her. This fucking psycho that just injured her and her son kidnapped their daughter, their nine-year-old kid. How are, how are these people real? Dude, I, I hope this, this monster was actually, like, really fucked up. Like, I... God damn it and the other officers, but her condition kept getting worse by the minute, and her panic state didn't do much to help. So after they secured Paul, they had to force her onto a stretcher against her will. They literally had to tie her down to the stretcher. She was so adamant about not being, uh, not taking their attention and having instead their attention be focused on protecting her kid. 
Oh my god, dude. They were both sent to the nearest hospital. You are mother? I don't care what happened to you. You thinking and you kids, but yeah. I don't can do anything. I yeah, she, she didn't care. She didn't give a shit what happened to her at that point. Her daughter was kidnapped by this fucking monster. Dude. Like, I, I don't know. When I see this, I think I think to myself, like... I complain about, you know, getting 52 copyright claims on cartoon videos on my on my fucking YouTube channel, right? Like that that's something that I was complaining about earlier today. Like there's so much fucked up shit that goes up and goes on in the world. Like just puts into perspective how how lucky every single one of us are right now that they could that they could watch this video in peace, okay? That they could watch the the, the new Nuxinor upload. I don't can do anything. I don't protect my kids. Dude, this this is at, this is the post Thingo interview, right? This is after she got her kid back. I hope. I mean, I don't know exactly how the story ends, but oh my god. With their only witnesses gone, the police had barely any information to work with. From the get-go, they knew that Jeanette had been kidnapped and that someone broke into the house, cut the phone cords, and attacked them before leaving with her. But other than that, all they had was the crime scene. One of the first things that I did notice in the garage was a lot of blood. I knew at that's that point a, this that's was a, a detective for you, ladies and gentlemen. Okay, I'm sorry. I know I shouldn't I shouldn't be making fun of the detective, but like, bro, very violent crime hmm. you start thinking are we gonna bring her home alive heather Fuck. nah that never mind i shouldn't have made fun yeah that that's the issue that that that's the fear randall the detective assigned to the case initially thought that maybe some of the blood around the kitchen and the garage belonged to jeanette as her forensic team were grabbing samples and examining the scene she also called in handlers and bloodhounds to get the search started as soon as possible Dude, this but is a kidnapping you gotta you gotta act as quickly as you can because more likely than anything else this this motherfucker is uh is gonna kill her right but sadly, this didn't lead them very far, since neither Jeanette nor her attacker were injured during the initial attack. As this was happening, she also noticed a security camera in the driveway of one of the neighbors. By reviewing the footage okay. it captured in the last hour, they were able to establish a rough timeline of the events. Huge. 30 minutes Huge. before Jeanette arrived, her attacker smashed her bedroom window and burglarized the house. Why did he come back? Why did he come back though to knock on the door that Jeanette opened the, that the girl opened the door for him? Why? Is he just that much of a psycho? He then went back to his car and waited for Jeanette to arrive. Why? Afterward, he followed her and knocked at the door. He then assaulted her in the bedroom for almost 30 minutes. God, what this girl went through, holy shit. At which point they headed to the garage. Meanwhile, Paul and Rosalia made it to the house. In the last bit of the recording, we can clearly hear Rosalia and Paul screaming for help. <laughs> There's real fear in that voice. No voice actor in the world could do that shit. But Randall was mainly interested in one particular moment. Here, when the attacker's car was right in front of the camera. In California, it is mandatory to have either a name, a license plate Yo. number, or a phone. So they catch him based on his car just being caught on a random street camera? I mean, listen, this guy's obviously not some super genius criminal, right? This is just some guy that wanted to burglarize and, and let his... his his fucked up passions get the best of him, to put it as lightly as possible, and he uh, and he did something obscene and horrible, right? This isn't like some mega laid out plan. Number tied to the perpetrator to issue a statewide Amber Alert. It's heartbreaking. You have the evidence right there. It's so close, and yet you need just a little Dude, bit clearer video. That's crazy. Can, can you imagine the frustration? It's like this is the difference between the life and death of this poor girl and because a couple of pixels are blurry, you can do nothing. So before she was able to fall back on Paul and Rosalia, she alerted the media hoping that even without an Amber Alert, maybe the population would mobilize himself anyway and spread the word about her disappearance. Together with her department, they got service helicopters in the air with loudspeakers, calling out her name and gave press conference after press conference just to make sure Jeanette's name was on everyone's mind in San Jose. It makes sense, honestly. God damn it, bro. Dude. Puts a thousand more sets of eyes out on the street. And we knew it was extremely important to 
push the information out to the public. Yeah, I give... guess that, well, that's the best you could do. Unfortunately, uh, unfortunately, what else is there? You have nothing. How, how could someone get away with this shit? I mean, obviously, hopefully he doesn't by, by the fact that this is a YouTube video. But, dude! Is it really that that easy to do something so obscene and horrible and just be able to walk away? Like, I'm angry, bro. How could someone do something this evil in broad daylight and just get away? Dude, we, we our fucking phones listen to all this sh every sh every shitty word that I say. My phone is listening to, okay? I talk about dog toys for 10 minutes, and then I open up Google and I get an ad for dog toys, okay? That happens, okay? I talk about some sort of video game with a friend of mine, and then I open up my phone and I see that literally first news article recommended is, is something about the video game I was talking about. But this? Oh, this? Too much? The pixels were too blurry. Give them a picture of Jeanette, make sure that flyers were flooded throughout the city. Along the way, Jeanette kept mental notes of every turn they made, hoping she would be able to find- When I hear stories like this, like, it makes me wonder, like, well, are demons real? Because how could a human do this shit? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, I, 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 how could a human being do this? Her way home, if she ever escaped. After a short ride, the car suddenly stopped. The man drove into the garage of a large white house. He opened the door, picked her up, and carried her inside. There, he went up the stairs to the second floor and opened a locked door. Behind it was a very small room with a TV, a little window, a bed, and a bathroom. He threw her on the ground and approached her with a menacing look. Oh my god. Okay, how do you know it was a menacing look, bro? After each assault, he would clinch her wrist to the shower head using a pair of handcuffs. Oh my fucking god, dude. This is a nightmare. This is a nightmare. Well, at least the fact that we have all these details, that means she, she survived to tell them, right? Like, otherwise we wouldn't, we wouldn't have know this shit. Run the water and leave her there for a while. Like I started to break down and cry and that was my only safe place was the shower because every time he left me in the shower was when he didn't touch me, he wouldn't hurt me. Dude, imagine that. Her safe place. Oh my God, dude, it's like heartbreaking. Her safe place. <laughs> Bro, her safe place was being chained to a shower because it means nothing worse was happening. Or he wouldn't rape me. The next morning, the aftermath of the kidnapping took its toll. While the rest of the Tamayo family gathered around Roselia in San Jose, the police asked some of the family members to take part in the public address. In the morning, he was watching the news again. My cousin was talking to me through the news. She was saying, Jeanette, if you can hear us, just know that. Be strong, girl. We're looking for you. She was like, just don't give up. Yo, so she actually did hear the news even though she was captured. Oh, right, they, he gave her that little television. That gave me hope. That gave me the strength. Either I'm going to fight to get out of here or die trying. I mean, real. Like, they somehow had nothing. Somehow this was a cold trail, right? Because, like, when it comes to most cases of, like, assault or, or murder or something, like, there is some sort of investigation, right? There, there's like an investigation that could be done, you know? Like there, there's your suspects, your people that for whatever reason had something to gain by hurting them, either either out of revenge or out of hatred or out of jealousy or, or something. Like, but when it's just so random, when it's someone that's just had no plan, like that just makes it impossible. During her second day of captivity, Jeanette started to plan out what would be her best course of action against her abductor. Because my life was at risk, I said to myself, I have to have a conversation with him so he gains my trust. So she Dude, literal nine-year-old, that nine-year-old Riz, bro. Tried to ask him the most casual question she could think of. I remember asking him, where are you from? Her attacker turned around with a dubious look on his face. He stood up, looked at her straight in the eyes, and for the first time since he kidnapped her, smiled. An intense feeling of disgust filled Dude, her chest. Obviously, she doesn't... She's not asking how he's doing because she wants to become friends with the guy. Oh my god, dude. At that moment, she wished she could have spit at his face, stab him in the back with his screwdriver, or any other acts of retaliation one could think of. But instead, she listened to her instinct. She smiled back, trying to look as innocent as possible. Dude, can you imagine a nine-year-old kid having the having the fucking wherewithal to do, pull this shit off? She then asked him if she could get a glass of water. 
He handcuffed her and for the first time, left her alone in the room while he went down the stairs to go and get it. Now by herself, she started to nervously tinker with the handcuffs since she had noticed that the lock didn't require any key. It was mechanical. I remember feeling with my fingers Damn. a little button and like a latch. What? He locked her up with mechanical handcuffs that didn't need a key? Crazy. I realized that if I moved the latch one way and pressed that button, the handcuffs would release. Bro, no. what? I mean, that's... that. Uh, uh, wow. Th that's what I mean. Like, it's the fact that this guy is an amateur, right? It, that, in a way, makes it scarier. Because how are you going to track this guy down? He just casually walked into someone's house, beat up two family members, and kidnapped a girl, right? With no connection to this family. How are you ever going to find this guy? Now freed, she knew she only had a minute to think of something useful, something that could either save her or maybe help the police find the culprit if she ended up getting murdered. My brother and I would always watch CSI, Law and & Order, and Bro. the detectives on the shows would always look for clues. Swiftly, she grabbed the watch the man left on the nightstand. Then, she rushed to the other side of the room, where the man had placed a few toys for her to play with. She grabbed a little clay turtle out of them, and finally, she ran by the bathroom and grabbed her underwear. She remembered that the CSI cast often used the victim's underwear in sexual assault cases, and she wanted him to be punished for what he did to her. Holy shit. Nine-year-old kid watched CSI and oh my god, what did she do? Did she throw this shit out the window? But soon enough, her investigation was cut short as she began to hear the heavy footsteps of her kidnapper walking up the stairs. Jumped back on the bed, put the handcuffs. Throw, the, throw it out the window. Son, and once he walked through the door, he just looked at me and in my mind I was hoping, please don't touch me because I had things on me that I was afraid that he might find. On the third day, Jeanette's family was devastated by the lack of progress the case had made. Despite the incredible amount of effort pulled by Randall, the police still had nothing on hand that could lead to her location. Wild. Wild how, how easy it was for him to get away with this shit. God damn it. We live in such like an advanced society and this, this just happens, bro. When the police tried to tell Roselia that past the 48 hours mark, most kidnapped children are never dead. found. She most kidnapped children after 48 hours are just dead. Or never found. Brother. You refuse to listen. I feel very, very, very sad because it, you are scared. My daughter, she's a little kid. She has only 10 years. I asked the police what happened with my daughter. When my daughter came by, I say, maybe never. Dude. And screaming. And screaming a lot. My daughter, I don't see for three days. I don't feel comfortable because I don't protect her. I don't protect her. I don't feel good. God damn it, dude. Oh God, this is awful. It is at this point that Jeanette became completely numbed to her kidnapper's assault. Her only impulse was to stay strong and stick to her strategy. She needed to continue to manipulate him. This was her only- I can't believe that this is how, how, how she ends up escaping, is that the nine-year-old manipulates the kidnapper. Chance at survival. My befriending was working. He asked me, are you hungry? And I looked at him and I said, yeah. He gave me his cell phone he had a cell phone with him what and he made me call for pizza why didn't sh why didn't he order pizza why her why did why huh he gave me the phone number of the cell phone that he had and i gave it to the man the man on the other side of the phone said can i get your address he told me the address and just like she did with the movement of the oh my god that's insane she tr nine year old kid tricked this guy into giving her the address of the place she was being kept. Car two days ago, she memorized all of it. If she ever got away, she wanted to be sure she would be able to take him down afterward. Fuck. Eventually, someone rang the doorbell and her kidnapper left the room for a minute. When he came back, he had a smile on his face. He put the pizza on the floor and on top Dude. of the box, there was a missing person flyer with her face on it. Why would he gloat like that? This guy, holy shit, dude. He then told her that he would get rid of her tonight before leaving the room. Oh my god, dude. Bro, that's insane. Once he closed the door behind him, he sees that she's missing. Oh well, they're looking for you. Guess I gotta get rid of you. Him. She threw away the pizza and started to grab all the evidence she could. She then stuffed all of it inside the pizza box and hid it under the bed. 
When he came back, he grabbed a pillow and started smothering her with it. Gasping for air, she tried to push her face against the side, but the man was too strong. As the lack of oxygen started to take its toll, she felt an immense rush of adrenaline running through her body, and in one final push, successfully slid her face to the side, enough so that she was able to take one last breath. As soon as five seconds later after I got some air, he pulled the pillow off and he asked me, do you want to take a shower? When she came out of the shower, she quickly dressed up and made sure the pieces of evidence she gathered earlier were still in her pockets. That, that, this is, this is mind-blowing, mind-blowing that she got out of this. It's like, when you hear of all the things that could have gone wrong in this situation, like, uh, it just makes you wonder how, how many cases did actually go wrong. How many cases did actually happen where, where they didn't make it, you know? When, when the girl just wasn't saved. She then heard someone knocking loudly at the door downstairs. She wanted to scream, but her kidnapper immediately jumped on her and put his hands over her mouth. Afraid that he would try to kill her again, she calmed down and waited for the person at the door to leave. We were sitting in the room for a while and afterwards when he heard that it was all quiet, that's when he took me downstairs into the garage. It was all dark. He then forced her into his car, put her back in handcuffs, and started driving. The ride was long, and Jeanette couldn't stop crying and screaming. Midway through it, she took a second to calm herself down in an attempt to make some sense of what had happened to her so far. I remember just crying to myself and just saying, I did the best I could. Fuck, dude. And they say, say watching TV doesn't save lives, huh? They say that watching TV is useless. I was just preparing myself for my own death. But even then, she hadn't fully given up yet. Along the way, she once again did her best to remember every turn they took, but they rode for over 30 minutes, making it far more difficult than the first time. After a while, the car approached the neon-lit parking lot of a liquor store, not far from the highway. The car has stopped, and as soon as he stopped the car, he grabbed me by my hair, and I looked around, and I was like, where are we? And he was like, I'm letting you go. And when he grabbed me by the back of my head, by my hair, he pulled me towards him. He was like, if you ever tell anybody what I did or who I am or anything about me, I will come back for you and I will kill your family. Fuck. But she got all that information. He, she got his cell phone number. She got his address. That's crazy, right? The guy lets her go because obviously it's much, it's harder to hide a body than to end a search, right? Like they, he, in the guy's mind, okay, listen. He's obviously not an intelligent man. He's a fucker. He deserves to die, I think, personally. Listen, I'm not saying... I'm not giving... I am Poppy Gloria. I don't give my opinion here, but... But but this guy needs needs to get fucking executed. Um, I, I, I don't think hiding a body in the middle of... I don't know, where the San Jose is easier than letting her go and having them find her, and then suddenly the missing child is found, and the search loses a lot of its heat. And I will kill you, too. As her kidnapper left, she ran toward the liquor store. She couldn't believe she succeeded. She somehow gained his trust. These right? She By the fact that she was like a good prisoner or whatever. Or a whatever. Oh god, I can't even think of this shit. And uh, he said, listen, you just don't tell or I'll kill you. And he figured, he figured that would be enough. Thoughts and emotions flooded her mind. And before she knew it, she was face to face with the cashier. I was just all kinds of emotions in one. And I remember the gentleman that was behind the counter looking at me and asking me, are you okay? And then he said, you're the little girl from TV. Brother. The man behind the counter didn't hesitate. He handed her the phone and when he realized she was distraught, picked it back up and called 911 himself. Oh she said, let me God. use the phone. I said, okay, here's the phone. When she started dialing the phone, she was panicking, scared, she don't know how to dial the number. A nine-year-old girl. Once the San Jose police got word that Jeanette had been located in East Palo Alto, they immediately reached her. Detective Randall was overjoyed to finally see the little girl Yo. with her own eyes. But in the back of her mind, she knew they needed to act quickly if they ever wanted to get their hands on the culprit. Yes, sir. I walked up to her and I said, hello. And, and all the pieces, all the pieces of the puzzle that are missing are in her hands, God damn it. Oh, Jeanette, my name's Heather and, and I'm here to help you. And before I really said anything else, she let me know that she had some evidence in her pocket. She proceeded to pull the toys, her underwear, the kidnapper's watch, and other items out of her pockets. Brother. Shocked to see how- Actual legend. This kid's a freaking monster. 
Oh my lord. Clever the little girl was, Randall asked her if she had anything else that could help them catch him. Jeanette asked for a sheet of paper and drew the house, bits of the address, his exact phone number, and every other piece of information she could remember from her. Bro, her exact phone number, dude! The, the, she got it. She remembered his exact phone number, the exact address, the the, the pizza. I'll, you know, another easy way to find it is you can get the the info from the Caesars that delivered that pizza too. God damn! Her nine year old kid watched CSI, did everything in her power to make sure that justice would be served. I, I, and I want to remind you all that this is not a happy ending. Okay, this is this is horrible, and there's nothing in the world that will make this right. At least this fucker is gonna eat some ass before he goes. I'm with the kidnapper. Noticing how knowledgeable she was, Randall asked her a decisive question. I asked her, do you think you can find his house? And she said, I think I can. And she said that she Yo, they took her. could direct us by saying no. right or left, right or left. While the police were heading back That's to- That's insane. Literally directed them to his house. Oh, fuck. And that dude was like, oh, you don't tell the police. Don't tell the police anything. And he, she had everything. He was like, she's just a nine-year-old. I can get away with this shit. San Jose to look for the man's oh, house. Okay. Another officer started to call every pizza place in the area to see if they could match the phone. Yeah, that's what I was saying. Easy, right? Number to a complete address. But before they knew it, they were already closing in on the place as Jeanette shuddered with excitement in the back of the patrol car. She was in the patrol car with the police when they went. The ultimate fucking vindication. Obviously, it will never, he'll never undo the trauma that, that she will, that she will carry with her for the rest of her life. I felt brave. I think that's why I stood up in the back of the car and started yelling and saying, that's it. A few minutes later, Randall received a confirmation from the pizza place that this was, in fact, the right address. So she ordered a tactical team and a canine squad to raid the home. Our SWAT team then put a plan in place to go and take him into custody. Put, put him in uh, fucking Vault 13. Let the, the other Fallout inmates fucking eat him alive. They had a layout of the home from Jeanette, and they went in and were able to determine that he was hiding up in the attic. The suspect, David Montiel Cruz, attempted to evade arrest and threatened the officers inside the house. So they unleashed the dogs at him. He suffered multiple injuries good on his shit, good shit. arms and was escorted outside of the house. Inside David Cruz, motherfucker. Inside, Heather also found the evidence-filled pizza box under the bed. Police say they know little about the background of the suspect. He was arrested at this house early yesterday morning. What's so wild is... Police like, say they know little about the background of he the... He just looks like a regular guy. Right? Just a, just a regular guy. Regular dude. You, you would never look at him twice on the street. Just your average fellow. God, what, what's going on in this man's head? That, that he, he fucking ruined all these people's lives. The suspect. He was arrested at this house early yesterday morning. The district attorney's office filed nine felony charges against Alvarez, including sexual assault, burglary, forcible lewd act. This guy, fuck, dude, man, God, I don't know. I just see, I see the devil when I look at this man right now. What the fuck? Rape. on the dogs to bite his dick off before they put him in prison, just just to make sure. Battery and a special circumstance. Special circumstance. This man tried to kill all these people. Castration is not enough. I just think it would be nice to castrate him before you give him the, I don't know, fucking chair. After the arrest, Rosalia was called, but emergency services needed to get Jeanette into the ER as soon as possible. After all, she'd been stabbed and the wounds had yet to be treated. So Rosalia and Paul followed them and finally got reunited with her when she was stabilized. Head cannon, he oops fell on the curb and the off officers accidentally oopsies stomped on him there oh god damn oh sorry about that yeah me and you both chatter me and you both remember them taking me to the hospital running tests on me i remember opening the door and seeing my mom and her face was so bad Brother. like she didn't even look like my mom i think she touched my mom's face she said you're hurt you know, she was so brave, she didn't care about herself. She, she was worried about us. You're everything to me, you and Paul were. Yeah. Very happy because I remember my dad. For the symbol, I when I she born, second time for me. The following years have not passed easily for Jeanette. Of 
For a time, she dealt with her personal pain on her own. She would never leave the house, stuck in the clutches of a paralyzing fear of men and the outside world. But when she was 15 years old, after six years of therapy, something clicked. She finally decided to face her fear and do something about it. 12 years later, TV producers reunited her with Heather Randall, the detective who, with a little help Aww. from one clever nine-year-old, oh put an end to the rampage of David Montiel Cruz and put him behind bars for life. It's not enough. Not enough! But, you know, at least he's off the streets. Oh, that's so wholesome. God damn it. It's so good to see you. I never really got the chance to come back and like tell you guys thank you for everything that you did. Like I really appreciate it. Bruh. You were strong, you're smart. What happened was you were amazing. You were brave, and that's why you're here today. Even if her trauma hindered her childhood, Insane. she didn't let it take over her life as an nothing but respect. Nothing but respect. See this this everyone on Twitter complaining about being a victim to to to, to evil Nuxtaku's evil misogyny when he makes a joke and oh god oh lord all, all those victims out this is this is a this is a, a fucking victim look what she did with her life god damn it this is insanely inspirational in like su such a tragic way this insane in d d <sighs> the the one thing that's keeping me a little little bit happy now is the fact that uh, they don't they don't like pedophiles in prison an adult today she decided to follow in heather's footsteps Yo! and study law enforcement her goal is to one day be a detective and help her community in the same way heather helped her and Dude, that is that's beautiful Fuck. on top of that she also wants to become a voice for the missing and every victim of violence everybody has a story Dude, this this is insane it could, it could literally make a movie out of this shit and no matter what life throws at us, no matter what obstacles, we're all fighters. And we all have the ability to keep going. I turned my fear into courage. I got my family back. Brother. What a legend. Today, Jeanette is training at the San Diego Police Academy. Heather became the first woman deputy chief of police in the history of the San Jose Police Department. Brother. What a crazy fucking story, dude. This, this video is made by Unseen. This was such a fantastically put together video, and God, I, I think these, these stories are important to know, you know? Like, it's important to realize this is a real thing that does happen, unfortunately, in the world. Uh, whether it's to protect yourself or to know that this, this shit exists and to be less trusting. I don't know, this was, this was heavy as shit. I don't normally cover stuff nearly this heavy, but let me know if you want me to do more of this. Uh, balls in your court, ladies and gentlemen. Stay safe out there. If you made it to the end, click one of these two videos, which also will definitely get me canceled. See you live on Game. Stay weird, fam.